I'm going to show you those eBay cheat codes and how to take a model from eBay and get it ready for the tabletop in a few simple steps. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days on this glorious Friday morning in the Beats Lab in Southern California in the Hollywood Hills. I got another painting tutorial for you. And today we're doing something kind of unique. We ain't never done this. I'm gonna show you the ancient Chinese techniques. Get your game genie out, input the codes, get your game pro, your Nintendo power. This is gonna be a good one. So basically, here's the gist. You can find models on eBay that aren't painted that bad. You don't have to strip them in acetone or put them in your degreaser and scrub them off. There's actually a protocol. You can search out on eBay, look for paint jobs that simulate a base coat. Real solid, thick colors that are blocked in. They look pretty good. Do the best you can with the pictures. Select them. Add them to cart. Get them in the mail. Make repairs. And I'm going to show you a few simple tricks, little hacks, cheat codes to getting that model on the tabletop with little to no effort. Literally, it's super easy. I'm going to show you right now. And I may have used a little clickbait in the title. I'm not, not going to lie. I'm not using this Bloodthirster for Age of Sigmar. I'm using this for Warhams because the new GW FAQ has got me excited to possess a Bloodthirster once in a while. And I didn't want to go and buy the new big, awesome, gigantic Bloodthirster that's going to be, you know, on the battlefield 50% of the time. So I went and got an out-of-print OG original Bloodthirster. Pewter. I bought this guy. I must have bought the same Bloodthirster in 1999. I'm super happy to have one back in my collection and one that I can collaborate on with, a, with an eBayer. And not to mention, when you buy models on eBay from fellow gamers, it is, it's good for the hobby in its own way because that model's already been paid for. And now a fellow hobbyist has been paid for it and now he's going to take that money and buy more hobby stuff. So the circle of life. Anyway, I want to take a quick second to shout out my Patreons. I want to shout out Sean. Terry, Nicholas, Brian, Jacquis, Brandon, Mike, Chad Thulu, Leonid, and Alex. You guys came in clutch this week. Patreon is my personal crowdfunding page. It's a way for us to connect as a, as friends in the community. I offer exclusive and early access to all my videos. It's you know it's ad free. You get to see things before. You used to get to see some exclusive shit you don't get to see anywhere else. In exchange, you give me a little money pay my bills, keep doing what I do. It's a pretty good relationship. I've been happy. I'm literally over the moon happiness. Like you guys have been coming through. It's a big deal. But also Twitch is a big deal. Twitch is our, is our channel. It's our TV station live, live tutorials. No movie magic. You can check it out every Tuesday, every Saturday. That's twitch.tv forward slash next underscore level underscore painting anyway guys let's do this all right let's do this thing guys here's that bloodthirster that i bought off of ebay and as you can see it's actually not that bad it's just kind of blocked in a lot of thick paint kind of a glossy coat you can see some of the chips. Obviously, it came in a box in a hundred pieces because these old pewter models did not ship well. So I pinned them back together real quick. And I'm just trying to color match these reds the best I can and cover up that pewter that's exposed. And the technique I'm using here is I'm not like brushing the paint on, I'm more like dabbing the paint on over the chips because it's there's kind of a little bit of a variation there and uh texture so like I'm kind of building it up thick letting it just ride doing my best to color match it and I'm not even gonna bother like showing you a list of paints I'm using on this blood thirster because you're not gonna have this blood thirster this is my blood thirster <laughs> so just do your best to eyeball the colors get them as close as you can find all the things that need repairing and don't overthink it this is how to take an eBay model that you found online and you selected for this purpose. I didn't just randomly buy this Bloodthirster thinking he was fine. I actually picked this Bloodthirster out of all the Bloodthirsters on eBay because I felt like I could work with his colors the best. Now, I didn't really want to repaint a Bloodthirster or start over from scratch because I, I wasn't what I was looking for. I was looking for a cool little model to add to my army, 
uh, in case I roll a six on, you know, demonology and malefic powers, so I can possess one of my sorcerers or one of my heralds to be a bloodthirster. So I wasn't really interested in like buying a new bloodthirster and starting from the ground up. Something that's not even going to be my army, but half, like 50% of the time, maybe. So this is the hack. Go through, do a quick search on eBay, find the models you want with the paint job that you feel works. Now you can see this paint job is basically just blocked in. I said the fact that it's a little thick. I mean, I wouldn't do a whole lot different than this if I was building up my colors in the next level painting technique. You know what I'm saying? Like I would be using similar reds. I might have airbrushed the reds on, you know, and then painted the rest in. So there'd be more smooth transitions and more dramatic uh, looks. And I probably have some sick dry brushing going off. But here's the trick, you know, like this is not much different. Like I said, just you, you should be aware of all the chipped pewter because you probably had to repair a model like this or, you know, pin it back together and just go through and just cover them up very thickly. And that's one of the fun parts about these old pewter models, these out of print models is they are they are vintage, um, but they they kind of have the same problems they've always had. So, I mean, I've had a bloodthirster before. I bought this thing new back in the day. I know exactly, you know, what about the bloodthirster pisses me off. So I was ready to go, you know, obviously not my first rodeo with a bloodthirster. I'm feeling pretty good about these color matching. I'm going to go in and fix this eye that was just, you know, the cut, the purple of his eye was just spilling out of his eye socket. So I'm just cutting it back in, fixing it up. Very little damage on his face. So I was pretty happy about that because that's going to be one of the areas I focus on. I did notice a piece of flash hanging off his tooth here. I don't know how that snuck by the original painter. That's a serious oversight. So we're just going to pop that off, sharpen the tooth up a little bit, and then we're going to come in there, touch it up real easy and do your same. You know, I'm using just some random bone color here, probably Menoth white or Menoth white base. And I'm just going in there and just patching up the bone colors. And he did a good job just, you know, attacking all the colors and try. He was actually, whoever painted this stayed inside the lines relatively well. Like I said, that is why I selected this model. I looked at all the pictures of it and I was like, I can work with that. He's done a lot of work here. So there it is. We've just touched up all the, all the parts, all the chips, all, all the pewter on all the, the colors. And now we're going to fix his crotchal region here. He had a cock robe that came with the original model, wasn't included in my purchase. So I just kind of modified a dwarf shield that I'd laying over, laying, laying around from the last project. And I glued it directly on over the crotchal region. And I'm just gonna paint it some bronze, some molten bronze, real quick. Dark gold, aka that's what bronze is. And I'm just doing a real light coat, real quick, let it dry, come in, start dry brushing up a little bit of brighter uh, golds using standard golds and uh, just, you know, working it in. Because we are gonna come back, and you guys know me that I'm gonna use some washes on this model. So I just needed to cover that region that didn't look right anymore. I'm gonna add a couple of quick little highlights to the gold armor, the brass armor using some new gold color from probably Reaper and just kind of, you know, give it a quick little dry brush, highlight up the abs, highlight up the chest muscles, highlight up, highlight up the armor plates, you know, just let it do what it do. No overthinking here. And you guys will see some people were doubting me online about this project. They're like, oh, I'll just strip it and start over. And I'm like, Hey man, this really didn't take that long. This is easy. <laughs> and like I said, this is perfect for that age of Sigmar army looking for some new figures, you want to get into a new system, you know, support the community, use eBay, you know, go to your hobby forums, pick up some OG out of print models. It's not, you know, it's, it's one thing to support the hobby uh, through buying from the manufacturer, but also buying a blood test that was already purchased from the manufacturer and then giving some real life individual in our community money. I find that to be a pretty rewarding experience. Feeling pretty good about this bronze, brass, AKA dark gold. You know, getting some little highlights on the nubs, on the tips. And now let's add some hooves because this guy forgot to paint the demon hooves fresh from the uh, Hellforge. He needs to get his fresh blood duster kicks in order. Real simple. No overthinking it. Just make sure you don't spill it all over the black hoof because you're trying to do as little work as possible to make this model look good. We also need to touch up some of the other metallics, like his chains that are rather on his arm. They were not painted very well. <laughs> they were painted in a rush, 
and some of the fur uh, spilled over into chain region and vice versa. So I just went in there and touched up these chains real quick using a quick eyeball color match, just using probably a Vallejo steel here. It's working pretty well. And obviously I'll come back in and I'll touch up that fur too. I'm just gonna grab any lighter brown I can see and just, you know, do a quick dry brush over the hair, over the dread, the, the, the iconic bloodthirster dreadlocks. You know, don't overthink it. Like I said, just nice, big, broad highlights. Let it do its thing. You know, we are gonna come back in with a wash tag and you'll see that here soon enough. Just across the grain dry brush over the front of his dreads, real easy. You can already see the model's already just tightening up all on its own, just with a couple of touch-ups. It's not too shabby. Feeling pretty good about that. Uh, touch up the fur on his wrists. I don't really know why he has fur on his wrists and nowhere else, but that's how blood just do. He's uh, He's got a wrist hair problem. <laughs> and uh, we're going to obviously transition into some of these stages leading up to the wash. We got a pretty good looking product right now, but as anyone who knows, this is basically just, you know, the steps you take, you get into the wash stage. So we're going to pull out the old airbrush thinner, the old gloss varnish from Vallejo. And we're going to just give this guy a nice once over. We're going to gloss him up. And then that's going to lead us to our wash stages. We're going to use the new GW gloss washes. We use the earth shade and the known oil. We're going to use these in combination. We're not going to mix them together, but we're going to pull from both as we go. And now he's nice and shiny. The surface tension is really broken up here. He looks absolutely horrible. Now we're going to start laying that earth shade over all the red and all the horns, basically over everything. We're only really going to use the black to darken up some areas like the metals and maybe some other clutch areas. But for the most part, the process here is lay it on thick, homie. And the combination of the gloss wash and the gloss coat really break up the surface tension. They really give you that blend to get into those recesses while also preserving a pretty nice red. It's not going to create a cloudy, muddled red. It's going to stay pretty nice. And you might have to build up the wash in some areas, like in the deepness of his muscles, because it will just drain right out of some recesses. So you do have to just keep your eye on the way you, your wash is draining. That's the only thing with a huge pewter glass coated model with all these little angles just gonna want to pay special attention and here we are just blasting through it not thinking too hard this arm right here is paying paying special attention to letting the wash build up into the recesses here this arm might require two passes just to get that bicep definition always got to focus on the bicep definition especially in pro painting getting it on the hands the hand, i mean most of this stuff is big exaggerated details and it takes really easy to this gloss wash. Not feeling, you know, not feeling like I'm really working too hard here. You know, just lay it on, man. This, like, it's, it's, a, this is an old sculpt, sculpted model. It's not computer rendered. The details are big. The details are exaggerated. They're, they're designed for these types of techniques. This is OG out of print models. Same thing. Just let it, just let it flow on the armor. Let it get in there. Let it just you know breathe new life into this model you know now it's going to separate some definition on the quads and the knees and moving down to the ankles you're really going to do some work here this is <laughs> such a cheat like the new gw gloss washing is like cheating definitely is a cheat code unlocked achievement unlocked game genie get it out get it out of here and now we're going to work it up into the wings and we're just going to like this is where we're going to mix maybe a little black in with the brown and just attack the big flats of these bat wings. Just lock them in. Really easy stuff, guys. I mean, this is like, you know, sometimes I say it's easy when it's not, but this is actually really easy. That's why I needed to show you guys this video. When I'm summoning bloodthirsters all over the battlefield and doing 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 the Dark Lord's work, I'm gonna feel pretty good about this paint job once it's done. It's hard to see right now because it's shiny and hideous looking as the light reflects off every surface. I mean, that is awful looking. We can also not lie about how bad that looks. Just, just hideous. <laughs> but um, you can see where the definition is popping out though. You can see, if you look through the gloss, you can see that what we have is actually pretty nice. It's a lot better 
than what we started with. Don't worry, I'm going to mat him down. It's going to look great here in a second, but I did want to go over the base situation. Obviously, he's an old square baser. Came on this base. I promptly ripped him off that base. Put him on a 60 millimeter base. Put some pumice on it. Threw some cork on it. And before I get you know, to the, into the next stage of dull coating, I'm going to just like really quickly work out some of the stuff on this base. I'm going to paint these big rocks real quick with just a, ba a basic bone color, any bone color would do. Real simple. Don't overthink it. Just pile it on. Just, just to create a little bit of separation between the color of the rocks and the color of the dirt. It's just a simple basing tech. We've got multiple basing videos. We just did a whole video with a similar look. Uh, how to paint realistic runic uh, mountain bases by Secret Weapon Miniatures. Check that out. You can see there's that base. Looking awful. And now we're going to come in there and just throw a real thick black wash down on here. And this is actually Vallejo Dark Wash. This is a this is basically a quick way to paint a base, a base black. Like this is this is a next level wash. This wash is such an ink. Basically, it is an ink. And it's really going to darken that pumice and it's really going to add some some fun looks to those rocks. And now after it's dried, we're going to go in there with a quick dry brush. Hit it with that bone, same bone color. Nice aggressive dry brushes on these rocks. You really want these rocks to have that look of like being totally different than the rest of the dirt but still having some kind of similarities you still, we want that contrast and that compliment so far so good grab a bigger brush dry brush the same color on the rocks a little bit more subtly provide a little bit of definition this doesn't take almost no time at all it took longer for this ink to dry than it took to do the paint job and there it is not bad <laughs> feeling pretty good about that and you can see what it looks like here. Not bad. You can see we went in there and darkened up some of the recesses of the wash. Really give this guy the look I want. And then here's the secret tech. Don't forget testers, model masters. Lesser looks flat. And look at that. Holy shit. What happened to that disgusting, shiny, horrible looking blood there, sir? Oh my God. We have a pretty good looking model here. Well, obviously, we can take it one notch up with a couple of paintbrush highlight tricks. I'm going to pull out that same red we started with, do a couple of highlights on the brow ridge, on the nose. Hit the lips, all those things, you know what I'm saying? Standard stuff. You've seen it a million times before. We're not really overthinking it. We're going to pull a little bit of orange out, mix it in a little bit with our red. Add a secondary highlight to the highlight we just did. You know, get it, you know, just build it up, make makes it because he's got a really fun face. Like you now, like really big exaggerated monster man features, like total wolfman features. You really want to draw attention to those. You know, and then progressively work the highlight in by adding more orange to the mix and less red, and drawing thinner and more detailed lines in on these highlight regions, and the face will begin to sharpen and become more HD as you work this technique in. You can see, good example. So far, so good. And I mean, look at how much work the the, var the matte varnish did. We have a totally different blood thister on our hands, guys. I mean, that didn't take no work at all. This was, you know, shockingly and embarrassingly easy. I don't know why the eBay seller didn't do some technique like this. Oh, I know why, because we didn't have a video on it. And now we do. Sorry guys in advance because the eBay market now are going to be able to employ these techniques and they're going to be able to ask for more money. <laughs> it's going to, the going rate of out of print blood this is about to double. And there it is, man. He's looking fresh. But we know obviously we can do a couple more details. You know, we save so much time. Might as well pull out a little bit of, a little bit of that bone highlight. It's a little bit of men off white highlight. Draw a couple of clutch lines on his, on his fingernails. Might as well do the same thing on his teeth. Super easy. Ain't even a thing. Easy mode. Obviously, uh, doesn't stop there. What else could we do? Oh, a little bit of that oxide effect from GW. You know, we can nail it on his armor. Water it down. Let it flow. Get it on the nuts and the bolts and the trim. Make that brass armor look brass. Because that's his thing. Is like the brass armor of the blood gun. So brass has this tarnishing thing it does. So, let's add it to the mix. Let's make it look good. Make it look antiqued. You know, so far, I'm proud of this model. 
Now, obviously, this is not the normal next level painting standard of amazing, um, incredible hyper highlighted models, but I'm happy with this, man. This is perfect for the, you know, the age of Sigmar season that's popping off. This is exactly what I was hoping to do. Anyway, guys, play on players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.